I'm Dan Galusha and welcome to another edition of Dan's Fish and Tales. Today I'm going to be talking to you about something that uh, really can <laughs> cause a problem. If you're ice fishing and you want to go out and all of a sudden your Vexilar don't work. Why don't it work? And this happens a lot during the first of the season because you have not taken care of that battery properly through the off season. Now if you're somebody like me that takes the flasher and actually uses it on their bass boat, uh, normally you, you think about it and charge that battery. But I was a bad boy and both of my Vexlars were down at the beginning of the season. So I had to get a new battery. Well, what I ended up getting, in fact, I'm going to be putting it in now. I just got it. Uh, that's another thing going to happen. You know, at the first of the season, there just might not be the stuff there because they've already filled their orders and stuff already went out the door. Well, right here, turn it around this way, there's a new lithium battery. That's right. Vexlar has lithium ion batteries. So, uh, and that's what we're going to put in here. Because I've actually had people ask me, well, how do you put it in? And I've got my FLX28 set in here. I'm not going to show you both of mine and, and doing it. But, uh, and I use the other one as a spare. Not just a backup for me, but say your buddy don't have a Vexilar. Uh, and you got two of them? Great, take one along. You both have one then. That's, that's what I do. Of course, I'm on the pro staff. That does help. Uh, but uh, anyway... Uh, and, and if you upgrade, don't just get rid of it. Well, you can. You can go ahead and sell your other one if you want. But I would keep it, just like I've done. Uh, and then you've got that extra battery. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to change this battery out. And I'm going to show you how you do it. It's not all that difficult. And I'm going to get you down here to the table, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, here's the unit. And uh, as you see, the battery, of course, as you know, you got one uh, back here. And that needs to be changed out. Of course, you got all this stuff in the way, so what do you do? Well, the first thing I do is take this off. Because you're going to have to have this off because there's a couple of screws you got to get to. So we'll, uh, we'll get this thing off of here. And then you'll disconnect if you've uh, still got them connected here, that is. You'll disconnect your wires. Takes a bit to do this. Okay, there we go. Now you've got your wiring right here. And what you want to do is disconnect your attachments. Your transducer, in my case of this, the FLX28 uh, has a producer. And we'll wiggle those off. Mine's on here good because I make sure that's another thing. When you put these contacts on, make sure that they're on good. And I've got this one on doggone good. In fact, I've even got it caught in here. Here we go. You could take the transducer off completely if you want. Uh, and then just wrap it back around. You can see I got it there. There it is. Okay, now the, the unit's off. Which it, The reason I had to take that unit off is because right here... You'll notice there are two screws right into here. There's one there and one over here. They're right there anyway. I can't see them from this direction. But right in here, we're going to take those off. And that is a Phillips head. Make sure you get the right size. And I'll take this transducer out of here. Producer in my case again. Take the screws out. That out of the way, so I got a tray to work with. Okay, there's your little transducer, producer, whatever you're using. That's what holds it. You got your screw right here. You can see where the screw hole was. I think you can where the screw is at. Now we're going to take and disconnect the battery. And we'll get it out of there. Like I said, it's, it's a heavy little sucker. And uh, now you've got your opening down in here, as you can see. 
that's where we're going to be putting this new battery. And actually, this battery is lighter weight than that one. That's the old style. Here, it just fits right into there, no problem. This one is also fused, by the way. Now you've got your connectors. Make sure that you get those back into the proper spot. And also, you want to take these off. You've got some protection wires on here. There's some protection uh, for your contact there. Slide that one on. Slide that one on. And she's ready to go. Now what you got to do, put this back in where you had it before. Line that up. Now what you do is once you put this in there, there's a couple of little notches or actually round spots like this. It fits right into the thing so that you know you got them lined up right. Put that in there make sure they're there. If it doesn't quite go in, push down on this battery. Make sure that fits in good because that will hold it up otherwise. There's a spot there. It fits tight so you got to make sure it's seated down in. You'll know that once you get this lined up. Then you put your screws in over here. Let's see, I think where I'm trying to put those in. And... Uh, we're going to go ahead and screw this down. Once you get one down, the other one will just fall right in line. In. That's probably one of the most difficult things is just putting the screws in, making sure everything lines up right. Now it's ready to go. I've got this little glow ring too and that goes over here by the way so I don't have to worry about that because that's out of the way here's your switch for that so that's we're gonna take that out of the way right now in fact and then we might want to make sure that we've got our wires here this is the producer wire that it's down through here and you want to make sure that you get it routed right you don't want to get it tangled into the your your power wires because your power wires are right here and then uh, over here of course you have your charger wire that fits right down into here that's where you put your charger now what we do is we got both wires here we take our unit and we connect it back on and this is where by the way it, sometimes it's good to just go ahead and unwrap this because then you'll have enough wire you'll see what I mean I now have enough wire that I can pull on out of here like this and then connect it and make sure you get the right one because this one the uh, producer is three wires that goes right or three you know three connectors or it goes right here so don't be trying to jam the wrong one into the right spot and there's also a notch so that you get this properly on there which makes no problem at all goes on there and then we get our power connector again there's a notch so that you know that you got the right polarity. Make sure it's a good tight fit. See if it's running. And it is, as you can see. So then we just connect her back. Make sure your holes are lined up. And there you are, you've got it all on there, your battery's installed, uh, I recommend that you give it a charge, where you'll pull this out right here, and attach your charger like you have. Uh, now you can rewrap this all around here, and you're, you're ready to go, and hit the ice again. Well that was a quick guide on how you install a battery into your new XLR. No big deal, but uh, I've had people ask me, you know, how the devil do you get around there? Well, it's just because of those screws, you just take them out and, you know, unwrap things like I showed you. I cut it along a little bit there because I didn't want you sitting there while I was trying to line up a screw hole or what. I mean, you're not going to do this in two seconds, but it's also nothing that's going to take rocket science to do. Uh, but it's one of those things that just remember, take care of your battery. And every now and then, do just take the thing completely apart like I had it there. And clean it all up. Yeah, wash it all out. Clean it. Get it. Get it done. Especially the end of the season, uh, and then store it. Uh, and again, you can use your flasher on your boat. They, Vexlar has got the things for you to do it. Uh, I've got mine mounted on my uh, motor guide trolling motor.
right up on the front of my Ranger Bass boat. Yep, that's what I've got, and, and it works, because that's what I use, a flasher. I'm not one of these guys that's got two huge TV screens stuck all over the place. Uh, I'm old school. Fish and learn what the fish are doing, not letting a computer tell you everything. Anyway, that's how you do it. So until next time, get out on the water and have a great day of fishing.